Arrived at the racetrack Friday night, sort of dabbled around a little bit with the with the engine. We weren't quite ready to start it. Saturday, the guys got up early and, and sort of, you know, got got a preparations going to be able to start the engine. I went through all the electronics, did all the checks I needed to do. Okay, fine, good. We're finally ready to start the engine. We go to start it, and it it won't. Now we, there's been some changes. Again, it's a new engine block. It's got a brand new camshaft. It's got a new camshaft position sensor that's in a different location than it used to be. So all these things we need to uh, verify before we try to make sure that it's really going to run. So we run through our checks, yeah, we think we've got it, we try to start it, and it's sort of popping out the exhaust, and that's typical when the ignition advance is wrong or the timing is wrong for the engine. And what I mean by that is, you know, the cylinders have to fire in a particular order. So in the case of a standard Chevrolet, there's eight cylinders, and it fires one, then eight, then four, then three, then six, five, number seven, and number two finally, before it starts back over at number one. So the ignition spark has to fire at the correct top dead center for each of those cylinders, otherwise that cylinder doesn't run. If it's firing out the exhaust, it's firing at the wrong time. And it's not just a matter of, oh, it should be 15 degrees instead of 20, it's way wrong. It's an order of magnitude wrong. So I know we have a new cam position sensor. I thought, well, let me just, maybe I'm wrong on how I measured it earlier. Let me just move it. I can move it to the other half of the cycle. The engine's gonna start right up. But when I moved it, it's the equivalent of taking the distributor out, having it 180 degrees wrong, and turning it 180 and dropping it back in. Only I'm doing it electronically with a keyboard. So I did that, and it was no better. In fact, it was just equally as bad, which it should not have been. You've got two choices when you do that. You put the distributor in 180 out, it does not try and start. It just pops and bangs and never runs, ever. You put it in the right way, it fires right up and runs. So electronically, it works the same way. If I have the, the trigger in the right spot, and I've told the ECU the correct uh, parameter, it's either going to start and run or it's going to pop out the exhaust like when you have the distributor 180 out. It's the point I'm trying to make is it's trying to run when it's got the distributor 180 out. And it's trying to run when the distributor's right. So it's like, it shouldn't be trying to run at all when it's wrong. It should just be popping out the exhaust and not trying to start at all. Okay, well, when I, when I had it one way, it was popping and trying to start. When I had it the other way, it was popping and trying to start, which is, it can't be. So just based on logic, I had a gut feeling I was telling Will in the trailer when we first started, this, this thing's out of time somehow. Did the wiring get changed? I made Will come out and check because really the only thing that'll do that is the ignition part of it. So nothing was changed in the wiring loom. We did get a new wiring loom on the injectors, but the injectors won't cause that problem. Only the ignition can cause that problem and that was not changed. So. After a, a little bit of, you know, sort of back and forth with the guys and we did some, some other tests, eventually I decided it must be the engine. But that's a really hard sell because it's almost never the engine. I mean, it's almost never something mechanical that's wrong. It's almost always something electronic. And uh, so you kind of got to be, you know, a little bit thick skinned and, and got to be a little bit stubborn when you've got seven guys that are telling you no way it's the engine, it's something that's in the electronics. However, the electronics don't change themselves. They don't wear out. Uh, they never decide because they're bored or they're angry that they're gonna do something different than what they're programmed to do. So unless someone's physically moved something somewhere, the electronics is gonna do the same thing it's done forever. And uh, I eventually convinced them that it was worth the time, me being wrong, to check the engine so we took the rocker covers off and just ran the engine slowly starting at number one and watched the intake valves open and it became obvious on the third one because what we should have seen is number one and then number eight and then number four but instead we saw number seven still right so six, six, 
Logically, though, it's not the same exact camshaft. It was purchased to be exactly the same, but it's not the physical same one. So, turns out, we take the rockers off. Sure enough, it's got a 7.4 swap. The engine's what's wrong. We got the cam from whoever... We don't know where the problem existed in the cam, you know, where the communication got lost or broken down, but we know at the end of the day, we have a firing order that's different than what it's supposed to be. So then I had to move the electronics, make them match what the engine is now, the configuration it is now, and then as soon as I did that, bang, it fired right up and ran. we figure we must be past that hurdle then the next problem is it actually has too much oil pressure which seems like shouldn't be a problem but we had an oil pr normal oil pressure might be like 80 to 100 psi uh, on one of these cars but we had like 160 psi and the problem with that is that it it tends to want to explode the oil filter the seals aren't ready really ready for that kind of pressure it also puts extra stress on the oil pump drive itself so we wanted to get the oil pressure down what was supposed to be well of course the oil pump got changed the spring that's in it isn't the right one, and we didn't have the right spring here, the right spring's back in Wolverhampton, so that, it just, when you just keep, you look, it's, you're not gonna get the guy to overreact by going, poking him one time in the stomach, but when you poke him once, and then you poke him once, and then you jab him, and you poke him, and eventually he's like, had enough, like, I'm, I'm done, stop. I don't want this anymore. So that was kind of what happened when, the, that, it was kind of like the last straw, like, I've had it. But anyway, that was resolvable pretty easily. We were able to just cut the spring down and release the tension on the valve. It's, you know, it's, it's just a regulator valve with a spring behind it, and it has too much spring force, so it makes too much pressure. If we take the spring force away here, it opens easier and the pressure drops. So that's all we did. We were able to cut the spring we had and make it functional at least enough to check the rest of the systems in the car to verify that they were working correctly. Yeah, I mean, basically, once that was resolved, the car ran, we were able to test a few things. The engine, was brand, it's brand new. Mark Lemoud just put the engine together like three weeks ago. He finally finished and the, you know, the car went, the engine went in the car. And so that was its first time starting ever. And since it's brand new, what you, instead of taking it straight to the racetrack, which you would typically do with a drag race only car, but this is a street car, remember? So with, with this kind of an engine, you sort of want to give it a chance to, it's almost like stretching out before you work out. Basically there's components inside the engine have all been machined. They're all very sharp and very square. And it just needs to run a little bit and let those those pieces sort of mate with each other. Uh, you know, they don't. It's not a wear. It's not. It doesn't wear things, but it's just. It's just sort of almost a handshake between all the parts, so they get introduced to each other. 